All right, everybody, welcome back to Dead Men Tell No Tales, and I am going to continue my fool's errand trying to play um, with my second round, still drawing two tiles per player. It's probably going to blow up in my face, literally, but let's see how it goes. So, for starters, I am going to get a, right, it's a two-way intersection. So I could just do this, that's a nice little thing. But again, I'm closing off options. I don't wanna do that, let's go ahead and put it over here. And this room is burning hot, and let's see what's in here. Another cutlass, all right, guarded by a level four skeleton. Crazy, I cannot find hatches or treasures. And, let's see, a three-way intersection. All right, let's do this, all right. And, all right, so there we go. And let's see what else we can find. And hey, here's our first treasure. Now remember, we're trying to find four of these things. And so this is guarded by a tougher guy, a level seven. So we now have a new target. Get down here, beat this guy, get the treasure, and carry it out. Although this treasure is heavy, so it really fatigues you quite a bit to try and carry it out. We'll worry about that in a bit. I assume Jen's probably going to come down here and try and beat the guy because she's a better fighter. But in the meantime, what am I going to do? Because it's my turn now. Well, let's see. This is the hottest fire burning right now. And if we, if we draw a red four and then a red five, boom, it's over. And oh, the, this room explodes. And, um, you know, and then this goes up to a four. This gets a fire in it, etc., etc. Plus, I'm really fatigued. So I would like to go, I mean, I could spend some time resting. Every time I spend an action to rest, I drop two. But heck, I'd rather come over here and fight this skeleton who's pretty easy to beat. He's only a three, and that would get me some rum that I could drink and get my fatigue back. So, plus also, if we get another hatch thing, I don't want this hatch spreading more stuff. Because heck, here's another room that it could spread into. Although it's interesting, if this hatch tried to spread again, it would only spread into this room because there's an equal number. But... You know, I'm going to do what we should have done before. I, first of all, my first action is I am going to eliminate deckhands. Remove one deckhand from a current or adjacent room. Because I can basically say, hey, I'm in this room. But the guy says, ah, and I can eliminate him from the next room. So I'm just going to eliminate this guy so that this room won't, if it spawns again, at least it won't. We really should have done it in the first room. If I'd done it first, we wouldn't have had all these extra guys. But say I'll be. Now, I'm in a room with one. It doesn't really matter, though. These guys are just kind of a nuisance. A single one you can completely ignore, other than the fact that, you know, if it's in a room with a hatch, it's an opportunity to spread. If there's two of them, it means you can't pick up anything in the room. If there's three of them, you literally cannot enter the room, and you have to fight them from outside. But a single one, not that big a deal. But anyway, so I just spent my first action just getting rid of that one, so we won't hopefully get any more spreads out of that, so that it won't spread into this room. Next up, I am going to move, but I'll use my compass to move for free, so I'm not going to use an action for this move. And I think what I'm going to do is, I'm going to move over here into this fire. Now, a 4 to a 2 means I've just taken 2 more fatigue, and I've crossed the line. Now, I didn't mention this in the intro, but I am now too fatigued to enter or to be in a room with a level 4 fire. And, you know, I had this situation in the first room where I was too fatigued to be in a five room. And so when you have the situation, you have a choice. You have to, your next action has to be either to immediately leave or to rest if it will get you or to fight the fire. And that's okay. I've come in here. I'm going to fight the fire. So my second action is going to be that I will fight the fire. And so this goes down to a three. <clears throat> and let's see. And my next action is going to be and so, it's okay. I, I can be in this room. Even though I'm super fatigued, I can be in this room now. My next action is going to be, I'm going to prepare myself a little bit for this fight before I move in here. I mean, he's a three. All I have to roll is a three, four, five, or six, but I, I don't want to take any chances. So, I'll, I'm going to prepare myself for this fight just in case. And now I've got two more actions. Hmm. So, I could move in. And then my last action, right. So, my next action is, I'm going to move. And now, the, the fire level here is three. I'm moving in here. And... Although, actually, oh, now this is kind of a problem. So, if the next card we draw is a red three, I've just set up so that we will have three red threes on the board. You, if at all possible, you want to try to ensure that when you're manipulating the dice, you do not have like-numbered dice, so that it limits the effect of cards when you draw them. So you want all the dice to be different numbers, if at all possible. So maybe I should spend another turn knocking this down to a two. Because then there's only one red two on the board. And then I'll spend my last turn moving up in here. 
Now, going from a two to nothing means I don't suffer any fatigue, but I just walked into a room with a, with a, I can ignore the little deckhand, but I do have to fight this skeleton. It doesn't take an action to fight them, you just have to immediately fight them. And so I'm gonna roll, and I'm just gonna roll high, not a problem. Wow, I just barely beat him. But I rolled a three, which means I don't have to spend this. I can save this for a fight later. And I have beaten the guy. And unfortunately, I'm out of action, so I can't pick up the rum and drink it. But that'll just be the first thing I do next round. So that was my turn. And at the end of my turn, yellow threes. All righty. So do we have any yellow threes? Yes, this yellow three becomes a yellow four. Um, and spread from the hatches. And fortunately, I killed this guy. This is the only hatch we have, and so there's not going to be any spreading from this room. So, heck, at least it's a good thing I fought that, although I wish we'd gotten that guy before these other ones spread. All right, so that's my turn. Jen's turn now. Let's see what she's going to be up to. For starters, I think she will use her bucket, because it's free, to uh, lower the fire die in an adjacent room. So she's going to lower this four back down to a three. Because that means if she moves in here, she won't suffer any fatigue going from a three to a three. Now, before she leaves, she could lower this to a two, but then she'd suffer fatigue. Oh, oh actually, oh, all right, hold on a second, hold on a second. First of all, she's got to draw her, so this is still a four, haven't drawn yet. Beginning of your turn, you draw. And again, normally you draw one, but I'm going to draw two. And this is going to be the last turn we do it. All right, so we have a level two yellow. <laughs> and I guess we'll put it over here. Now, it's interesting, by the way, this is a hard line. I could put it like this, but this door would effectively be a dead end because you cannot build any more rooms south of this line because there's no ship there. So I so put it like this, though, so I'm still keeping my options open to build. And there is a yellow two in this room. And let's see what else is in this room. It is another treasure. Oh, we found our second treasure, although I ended up putting it very far away from everything. And it's at the end of this one-way corridor. So, all right, well, we'll have to come back down and go. And to get to it, we've got to go through the captain. Oh, dear. Okay. But anyway, so now, Jen's first thing she's going to do, use the bucket to turn this to a three. Okay. Now, she's hardly taken any fatigue at all yet. So, she could just go on ahead and run... And she'd suffer two extra fatigue, but that's it, because actually going from a three to a three is fine, going from a three to a two. So if she runs, she would get to this room in two turns. But I think before he comes in here to fight this level seven guy, Jen is going to prepare for the fight a little bit more. So now she's got two, she needs a seven. So that means she'd need a five. That's not enough prep. She's going to do some more prep. So now... She needs a four. So she has a 50-50 chance of beating this guy. I think she wants a little bit more prep. She wants to have her best shot. All right, so she spent half her turn just prepping for this fight. Now, next up, she is going to run because time is running out. And that means she gets to move two rooms. One, and there is no fatigue here because it's a 3-3. Three, three. Two, there's no fatigue because it actually drops. But remember, when you, when you run, you suffer two fatigue, so she suffered anyway. And so now she cannot enter level five rooms anymore. Although the fires relatively moderately under control because we don't have that problem. But anyway, so she's, and she's got two more actions after this, but she just stepped into the room with the guard, and so now she has to fight. And again, we need to roll high or go home. Uh, good luck had to end eventually, didn't it? Okay, so a two. Even if she spent her four, that's not going to help her because she'd still only be a six, and she needs to get a seven to beat that guy. So she failed. Now, when you fail against a regular skeleton, Jen's in against a guard. They're super tough. They're special. If you fail in a fight against a regular skeleton, you roll the die to see what happens. Because you might get chased away. They might get chased away. You might get a chance to fight them again, etc., etc. But for a guard, there's, there's no randomness. You know what's going to happen. If you lose against them, Jen now has a choice. She can, um, she can run away, or she can fight again. So... Let's see here. Uh, da, 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 da. Now, I don't think you have to use another action to fight again. No, no, of course you don't. Yeah, you never use an action to fight. So, um, although, wait, oh, but, but I forgot. Before Jen does anything, she has to suffer more fatigue. So, here's a tough choice. Two to seven. She can suffer five fatigue now, or she could use up all her combat and only suffer one fatigue. 
I think she'll suffer the five. One, two, three, four, five. And suddenly, that's bad news. So now, after she suffered her fatigue from losing and not using this, she's going to fight again. And this time, she's going to beat that guy. She's not going to run away. Come on. And if, you did, if she did run away, she'd have to suffer another fatigue because she's going from a two to a three. But so she's not going to run. She's going to roll high this time. Boom. Um, and unfortunately, well, it's not quite enough. So she'll have to spend all four of this. So it was a bit overkill, but she beat the guy. Boom. All right. So we have treasure. Whew. Okay. Now we've got, uh, she's got two more actions, although her fatigue is through the roof. Now one action can be, since there's, uh, if there were two of these little deckhands, she would not be able to pick this up, but she can spend an action to pick this up. And then she could spend an action to leave. But here's the thing. When you're, you can't run anymore while you're carrying treasure. And while you're walking around with treasure, you don't suffer the difference in um, fire. You know, if she moves from this room to this room, she would only suffer one fatigue normally. But if she is carrying treasure when she moves in here, the difference doesn't matter. She'll just suffer three. But here's the thing. Remember, this is only a one. So if she's carrying the treasure through here, she'll only suffer one fatigue. So I think she is going to pick up the treasure. And then her, so she's got this. You can carry up to one treasure at a time. And then her last action, she's going to move them out. And she suffers one fatigue. Even though the difference dropped, she'll always suffer the fatigue. And then when she moves in here, she's going to suffer two fatigue. But then the next move, which will put her up higher, but then her next move is she'll finally get out. She'll get on the dinghy. And whenever you go to the dinghy, that knocks your fatigue down in half. And she will have gotten the first treasure. So that was it. Her whole turn is over. And... Now it is an event card. A, a C. Ooh, okay. Well, yellow ones. Is there a yellow one? There's not a single yellow one on the board. So no fire heated up, but every hatch generates a dude. We only have one hatch, so there's a dude here again, which means it can start spawning into this room again. Although again, it's not the end of the world because it can't spawn into those rooms. But the problem is eventually, if we get another one of these hatch cards, then another dude will come here. And then, uh, because there's two here, all these other rooms can get another spawn. So it's not a problem now, but if we leave it alone, it will become a problem. Let's see, and meanwhile, what do we, I forgot, we've had one event, or, you know, once we get three of these cards, then we'll have to reshuffle the whole deck. Okay. So it's back to me, back to my turn. And now, finally, I'm to the point where I'm no longer suicidal. I'm just going to be drawing one tile a turn. A uh, red four, and it's a three-way intersection. Hmm. It's a red four, which is a problem. But I think I will put this... I'll put it over here, kind of out of the way. And we'll see what appears in here. I'm hoping a treasure doesn't appear in here. Or I'm hoping... You know, a skeleton or a hatch is just not a treasure, so I don't want to have to run all the way over there to get to it. Let's see what we find. It is a treasure! Oh, come on! Of course! See, because my plan was, if there was something over here that I didn't care about, like another bottle of rum or something like that, then um, I would probably never come to this room. If this room ever got to a six, who cares? It explodes, it only increases the fire here, which wouldn't be that bad. We can afford to have a couple of explosions, and I just wouldn't care. And so I was kind of just putting this thing off as a dead end. But now, of course, our third treasure is there. Of course, that's the way it goes. Anyway. All right. Anyway, so I've drawn and now I get to do some actions. Now, one thing I haven't mentioned, by the way, if on a given turn you find yourself not wanting to use all of your actions, the remainder of your actions you can give to um, your teammates so you can carry over so they get to do stuff on their turn. So that's actually a really important thing to bear in mind. But anyway, the first thing I'm going to do on my turn is I'm going to use an action to pick up this rum, and I'm just going to drink it immediately. And this is out of the game. And so, one, two, three, four. And now my fatigue has dropped significantly. Okay. Now what am I going to do? I think second thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to spend the time to go on ahead and, and plunk this guy once again, just so we don't have to worry about spreading dudes. And now I've got three more actions I can spend. Let's see, I've got, and I've got my compass, which would let me move for free. Although, again, I could swap it out. I mean, I could give myself a sword so that I have a better shot, and then I could come in here and try to beat this guy and get my own sword so I could become a better fighter. That's not a bad idea. Hmm. Let's see, what was in this room? A sword as well. All right. Interestingly, Jen, if she wanted to, because she's so close, she could drop the treasure here, come over here, fight this guy, pick up the sword, then come back over here and continue on. That might be worth it because maybe we don't want to spend time going over there in the future. Plus, it'd be good while Jen's in the neighborhood to get rid of that fire. 
Okay. I, you know, I, I would like the idea of getting a sword for myself, so I, I'm a little bit better at fighting. And plus, I've already done some prep, so I've already got one, which means if I spend this, I've got a 50-50 chance of beating this guy. So I think I will just spend a little bit of time prepping a bit more just to be on the safe side. And then I will spend an, or I will move for free using my compass. So I want to spend an action to move in here. Now going from zero to two means I just took two fatigue. And now I immediately have to fight. Let's roll high so I don't have to waste my prep. It's a five, beats a four, yay. All right, so I didn't, all right. And now for my next action, I will pick it up. So I've got a sword, although it's kind of a bummer. Picking up this sword didn't get me any kind of bonus because, eh. oh well. All right. Now it's interesting. This room is a dead end. Now that I come over here, there's never going to be another reason to come into this room again because there's not like there's anybody else in here. But you know what? I think I will just go on ahead. Just since I'm in the neighborhood, I'll spend my last action to drop this down to a one. Just so that, um, you know, it's less of a problem. So we're not very close to suffering this explosion. You know, I could spend another action next turn and you know, get rid of the fire in this room completely if I wanted to. But anyway, that was the end of my turn. Let's see what the event is. And hey, it's our second um, reshuffle, or getting close to reshuffle events. So it's a five. Any yellow or red fives turn to sixes and explode. But fortunately, we're under control because if a five ever appears on the board, that's trouble. You got to get over there and get rid of that five because in this deck, I believe there are, there are more five cards than anything else. And you know, there's these double, right? So fives are dangerous. So basically, no fire expanded, no event happened. So we totally dodged a bullet. And now it is Jen's turn. And see, the interesting thing is, if Jen, she's so close, she could just go one, two, drop it, but then she would throw away the rest of her actions. So I think she is going to have a little bit of a rumble with this guy. Although, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, she can't. Jen cannot walk into this room. Yes, she can if she's, okay. So, well, first of all, Jen's got to draw a tile. All right, uh, a level four red. Hmm, where to put this? I could continue with my plan of saying to heck with it, and who cares if rooms explode over there, but that already blew up once in my face. So let's put this over, let's put this over here. Okay, that's, that's legal. And there's a red four in this room. And what else? And uh, another cutlass, all right. Why couldn't the treasure be there? That would have been a much better place than way the heck over there. Okay, guarded by the, oh my gosh, look at all the fires you have to go through to get to these two treasures, that's insane. All right, so anyway. So, um, first of all, the first thing Jen's going to do is she's going to use her bucket to drop this from a, a four to a three. So, she'll only take two fatigue when she moves in there. Um, but since it's not a four, she can move in. She wasn't able to move into a four, but now that it's a three, she can still move in there. All right. Then, she is going to drop the treasure in here, which doesn't take an action. It'll take an action to pick it back up later. Now... So she's got a one, she needs a four, so she'll spend a little bit of time doing a bit of prep before she goes in there to fight that guy. So she's got two. So yeah, she's feeling pretty good about beating it now. I mean, she probably is fine anyway, but better safe than sorry. And so she's prepped. And now she will spend an action to move in. Okay, and so she just suffered two fatigue which means she can't stay in the room. She's going to have to get out, but before she even worries about that, she must immediately fight. So now she's going to fight this guy. And she got a six, so she didn't have to use any of her stuff. He's beaten. Boom. And now, um, Jen has to leave unless she'll do what she's going to do. She will spend a token and put this down to a two. Or from a, I'm sorry, from a three, yeah, to a two. So now it's okay. She can stay in here. But you know, Jen has really pushed herself a lot. She is super fatigued. She's about to die. Now, she has a few more actions. One is she's definitely going to pick up this cutlass. That's why she came. And what was this guy guarding? Oh, she could go in there and get another cutlass. Although she'd take two fatigue to go in there. Plus, she can't go in there because that's a four. You know what I think the next thing Jen's going to do is? She's just going to rest. One, two. She's going to drop two. So now she can move into level threes again. Since she's over here, it feels like such a waste not to go and get that cutlass and become the ultimate fighter. Because somebody needs to be a super fighter to get past this gauntlet to get to these treasures. And it's not like that treasure is going anywhere. It's fine. We can pick it up later. So, I think Jen is going to rest up some more. One, two. And you know what? She's going to stop. Next turn, first thing she'll do is use her bucket to turn this into a three so she can go in there, and then she'll go in and fight that guy. But in the meantime, she's going to stop 
because she's rested enough to be able to move in that room, she's going to give me her remaining action. So next turn, I get six actions instead of five. Okay, and now at the end of her turn, we have another event. And it's a trap door and the fours. E any four raises to a five. Now that's scary. So no fours, but this four became a five. And that's a problem. And this four became a five. And that's a problem. That's a big problem. Huh. All right. And... Trapdoor, again, this is crazy. This is the first time I've seen this where there's only one. We've put this many tiles out and there's only one trapdoor. Normally there's two or three. So you see these things like pop, popping up like viruses and pandemic all over the place. But this is just, this game has gone a bit wacky. Okay. So there we go. And, um, right. So we, once again, a guy appeared here. So we're ready to spread into this room. This guy is very persistent. He keeps coming back. I keep bumping him and he keeps coming back. All right. So that was it. And now it's my turn. First of all, I've got to place another tile and it's a yellow three. Where would be a good space to put this? Let's put it. Hmm. So I've, I've got these two exits, but I'm worried that this room might blow up. I mean, in fact, actually, it's almost a guarantee we're not going to be able to get to this room in time because the only way to get to this room now is to go past all these guys. I think this room is a goner, which means this treasure is definitely a goner as well. It's pro there's nothing we can do about it. So that's that, that plan of saying an unimportant room, that has definitely backfired on me. Where am I going to put this, though? Let's go on ahead and put this here. Okay, and there's a yellow three, and what's in that room? Finally, our second hatch. Whenever you put a hatch down, uh, a bad guy, you know, a little deckhand pops out. So now we have a new place where deckhands can spawn when the uh, deckhand spawning thing happens. Okay, so there we go. And now it is my turn. Okay, so I'm a bit rested after my grog. I'm ready to fight. I'm at a dead end. So... I can move around for free. And don't forget, I haven't been doing it much, but anytime I want, I can spend an action to swap. I can use this compass to move freely, and then I could use an action to swap it out to get another item. And so you can use multiple items in a given turn if you want to. Let's see, now what do we need to do? Now it's interesting. If I do come in here and I fight and I lose against that guy, you roll a die. And one of the chances is you can run away. And, um, or one of the chances is they run away. And um, if I run away, I could just run away from them, come into this room. But uh, there's just all these guys to fight. Yeah, it's just, it's not going to happen. This is just, uh, uh, it's just a bad situation. Okay. So again, we just have to assume we've lost this room and we've lost this treasure. But that's okay, because we only need to get four treasures. We've already found one, and there's another one over here, and there's still two more here in the cup to draw. Oh boy. Okay, so what am I going to do? What is my turn going to be all about? Well, for starters, I think the first thing I'm going to do, do I want to get rid of this fire? I so don't care about it. Yeah, I'm really just not bothered. So I'm going to use my compass to get one free movement. And I suffered no fatigue because I went from a one to a nothing. And let's see. What else do I want to do? I could go on ahead and pop this guy again so he'll, again, stop the spread. Yeah, what the heck. I've, you know, particularly since Jen gave me an extra action. All right, so here's all my moves. I haven't used any of them yet. And so I will use the action Jen gave me, and then I hand it back to her. You can't hold on to these. You cannot bank actions somebody else gave you. Even if you don't use them, they go back to the original player. So I'll give that back to Jen. And so my first action is I'll just bop this guy again because I get a kick out of it. And it's such a shame. I have not used this power once. This power is useless because there's no... I mean, I, that's crazy. All right. So what's number two? I'm giving up on that. There's another five over here, but Jen will have to take care of that on her next turn. Fortunately, she's got a bucket, so that's going to help her. And she'll have to spend some time resting. All right, so what do I want to do instead? Hmm. I could come back over here and start carrying this treasure out, because we got to do it eventually. You know, it's not going anywhere. So maybe I should do that, because I mean, I've got one sword and I'm a little bit prepared, but this room, this is a death trap with two guys you'd have to fight back to back. Although, at least the captain is at his lower level, so he's not too tough right now. He could have been an eight. Um, but I think, let's go on ahead and um, get that treasure. Heck, maybe, well, oh, but that's kind of wasteful because Jen's, well, actually, wait, yeah, Jen's going to do this and she's eventually going to come back this way. 
maybe I should just go on fire patrol. And I mean, because if we get, let's see, what do we, we think? We got a lot of threes here on the board. If we draw three, that's going to be a lot of fires that expand. Hmm. Uh, let's see. You know what I could do, though? I kind of like that. Let's do this. I'm actually going to swap an item. I'm going to get rid of my compass, and I'm going to take the pistol, which is something I can use you know, once per turn. All your items you can use once per turn. So my second action is I'm going to move, and I take two fatigue. So once again, I'm past the four. And now for my third action, I, I, I'm not going to use an action for this. I'm going to use my pistol. My pistol lets me attack a guy in an adjacent room for one action. All right, so it does cost me an action to use this. So I can aim and maybe take one of these guys out without ever having to step into the room. And even if I lose, I won't suffer fatigue. So that's pretty cool. I can just stay down here and just start shooting at those guys and not go in and face them. So that's a pretty nice idea. Let's see, do I want to prep? If I, I have to beat a four, that's pretty easy to beat. So I'm not even going to prep. So my next action is... I'm going to ready, aim, fire. And let's see. I'll go on ahead and I'll take out this guy because that will reveal some rum. And you know, then it's room for me to pick up. When this guy gets beaten, he just goes back into the cup. And he might get drawn again immediately. So I'm in no hurry to put him back in so he could come right back out and spring up somewhere else in the world. So I'll take out the little skeleton first. OK, so I'm going to roll. And all I got to get, well, hopefully I just get a four so I don't have to spend my, my combat. That's a three. That is not enough. So I do have to spend my combat, but it doesn't reduce all the way down, so that's pretty nice. And I beat this guy, and he dropped a bottle of rum. Yo ho ho. Okay, so that was pretty nice. I've still got two actions, but I've lost my will to fight. Um, and I know Jen's got, you know, Jen could run into trouble. Jen's got to come in here. She's got to put this fire down. She's got to fight this guy. She's probably going to have to rest because her fatigue is low. You know what? I think I'm going to stop right there. That was pretty successful. No, I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to turn this two. No, I'm not. There's only one red two on the entire board, so I don't mind it. All right. So I'm going to stop, and I'm going to give these two actions to Jen, because she's got a big turn coming up. All right. So that's it. I'm done. And now, at the end of my turn, what's the new event? And oh, OK. The skeletons move. Oh, dear. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. This is scary. All right. Well, first of all, any ones in red or yellow increase. So we go from left to right. So this goes from a, a 1 to a 2. And this goes to a 2. And that's that. And now all non-guards move. These guards, they will stand still. Oh, in fact, actually, there's only one non-guard on the board. It's Captain What's-His-Face. And they always move to an adjacent room that will get them closer to the closest enemy. So in this case, it's a no-brainer. The captain is coming for me, and suddenly, I've got another fight on my hand. And I did not prepare for it. Instead, I gave Jen my extra... Oh, no! Well, that's no problem. Because, heck, I already have a cutlass. So all I got to do... All I got to do is roll a 3. A 3, 4, 5, or 6. So as long as I don't roll a 1 or a 2, I'm fine, and I will beat the captain. So everybody think high thoughts here. Yeah, I'm, vi I'm visualizing a 6. Okay, well, a 1 plus 1 is not a 2. So he has beaten me. And so, unfortunately, I now suffer fatigue equal to the difference. I had a total of 2, he had a 4, so I just suffered 2 fatigue. I cannot enter level 3 fire rooms now. And what's worse, now he's going to get to mess with me. Let's roll. Let's see, and i got to look up. There's a little chart in the rule book. It'd be kind of nice if, there, if that was... Oh, wait, actually, no, it is on here. Right, I forgot. This is, my, this is the other side. This is the reminder of, hey, you beat an enemy if you're greater than or equal. Um, if you lose, you add fatigue. I just did it. And then you roll the, oh, the pirate retreats. I rolled a three or a four. This guy came in, and now he's going to leave. That's interesting. And I believe it's my choice where he goes, right? I'm pretty sure it is. Let me double check that. Retreat, retreat, retreat. Yep, a room of my choice. Yeah, so let's have him come over here. And now he's out of the way. Maybe we can save this room after all. All right, interesting. Although I did suffer some fatigue for it, but I, mean, I had my chance to beat him. But this guy is, I mean, actually, I almost don't want to beat him because if he goes back in the cup and later on he comes out and he's an eight, that's not good. So in the grand scheme of things, that wasn't too terribly bad. And that was the end of my turn. And now it's Jen's turn. And she gets eight actions this turn because I banked two of mine or gave them to her. Okay, so, but first she's got to draw a tile, like always. Uh, red two with a powder keg. 
<laughs> Let's just keep on expanding this section over here. Red two. All right, and what's in that room? You might ask yourself. It's another hatch with a little hello. And so now the bad guys are starting to come out. Although again, they're spread out so far that we're never gonna have doubles. So my power, my power. Okay, so that was that. And now Jen is good to go. She'll use her my two actions first and give them back to me and then she'll use the remainder of hers. So now, first of all, she can't even walk in this room, but first she'll use the bucket to turn this from a four, from a four, from a five to a four. Then she still can't go in there. So next she will rest and she gives me my action back. And what the heck, she'll use both of my actions just to rest up. So now she can go back into fives. No, okay, she won't rest up that second time. She better, just in case she needs something else, just in case this fight goes bad. All right, now, she needs a five to beat this guy. Although, you know, it's interesting. Why not? Let's do it. Because what Jen can do is, she's used the buck. She can't use it anymore. She can spend an action to take the pistol from me and shoot at this guy without having to risk anything. What the heck? Let's go with that. So, Jen's next action, giving me my action point back, is to give up the bucket... And then, instead of taking one of those, she'll take the pistol from me, and now she's ready to use it. And whenever somebody takes an item from me, and this is co-op, it's not like somebody can force it from you, but I gave it to her. Now I get to take something from up there. I'm inclined to take the rum. Yeah, I'm going to take the rum, because that's a free rest. So, because I'm really fatigued here. So, I got the rum for free. So, we both got an item, so that was a good use of an action. All right, so now, Jen's next action is, she will, is she going to pump her fighting up? She's already at a two. So as long as she doesn't roll a one or two, again, she's got it. So I don't think she's going to waste time. She's pretty confident. She's going to use the pistol, and she's just going to not a one or a two, not a one or a two. Again, visualizing a six or a four. That's fine. Four doesn't beat the four, but you know, four plus her guaranteed two because of her two cutlasses beat this guy. Pop, and um, and she didn't have to use that. Okay, now she will spend an action to move in there. And um, the two to a four means two fatigue. And so now she's either got to get out or fight. So she will fight the fire and turn this four into a three so that she can stay. And then she'll pick up another item to get her next. Oh, wow. Look at this. And because she was empty, she gets a free bump. Wow. She is almost the greatest fighter the world has ever seen. One more cutlass and, you know, there's no more to leveling up to do. All right. And she's still got two more actions. You know what? Since she's here, she's going to fight adjacently and just pop this guy so we get less spreading over there. Although, really, you don't really care about that because it's only going to spread into this room. It's not that big a deal. Instead, I think she's done traveling. She's going to head it back out. So she spent an action to come this way. No fatigue because she dropped. And then she will spend an action to come over here. No fatigue because it was equal. And then next turn, she can pick up the treasure and carry it the rest of the way back out and then reduce her fatigue by half. So that was a very successful side mission she went on with a well-timed pistol. Okay. And so now at the end of her turn, another event. And, oh, this is interesting. Any blank yellow space gets a level one fire. And there are none. There's a blank red space, but there's no blank yellow spaces. So, but every hatch gets another guy added to it. So this is a problem. This hatch gets a guy. This hatch gets a guy. And this hatch gets a guy. So now these can spread two into their adjacent rooms. And so that's, I mean, we, we, we're still not, I mean, sometimes it can be a very big danger. But hey, finally, I've got a room where my power could work. I could come in here and kill two of these guys with one attack. But they're, of course, at the far ends of the earth. Who Go figure. All righty. So that was that. And now it's my turn. Another tile. And it's a red one with a pirate keg of three. See, I don't think we want to have to travel back up there. This is still going to blow up any second now. <sighs> I can't put this here. So I could put this here. I could put, I'll put this here. All right. And we got a red one. And what's in that room? Another hatch. Oh, see, now... These hatches can... Well, actually, that's not true. A hatch cannot spread into an adjacent room if there are more skulls or if there's already a hatch there. So it's not like they'll ping-pong each other like Pandemic or anything, but still. All right. All righty. Uh, have we had any... I have not... I have to admit, I've been forgetting about checking the... Let's see. So this is a two. This hasn't gotten to a four. 
This is a two that hasn't gotten to a four. This three hasn't gotten to a five. Yeah, so, so far we haven't had any powder kegs go off. So we haven't had a single explosion. Actually doing pretty well. All right, so anyway, so that was that. And we got a new tile, more bad guys. And so now it's my turn again. And I'm super, I can't move into a level three room, although I would like to, to get that grog to rest up a bit. So I think for starters, first thing I'll do is I'll use my rum I picked up for free. And that is, didn't cost an action. Now for my first action, I will, Reset my actions here. I will move and I take one fatigue for going to a two to a three, but I can still stay in the room. For my second action, I will pick this up and drink it for free. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Very nice. So that was my second action, grabbing the grog. And now for my third action, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna spend an action, I'm gonna grab that pistol back. So I've used my rum to good effect. I will take the pistol because I'm going to shoot at this guard. And in the meantime, what is Jen going to pick up? What could she pick up that would be useful? She could, I mean, you know, she's, no, she's about to get a big break from her fatigue by getting off the boat. Um, she want a bucket to fight fires or a blanket to fight fires? Or a dagger to let you automatically kill these guys as you move through the rooms with them? or a compass to be able to move around faster. I think she's gonna to wanna to be able to move around faster. She's gonna take the compass that I've been carrying for quite a while. There we go. Okay, so, right. And now I've got two more actions. One, I will prepare. And so now I have a 50-50 chance of beating this guy if I use my last action to shoot at him. But I'm gonna do it. All right, so I'm gonna spend my action to activate the pistol and we're gonna open fire and I'm just gonna roll, uh, I'm gonna roll four. That's what I'm going to roll. No, I'm going to roll a five. 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 Number five is alive. Or a six. That'll do. Six. Beats him. I don't even have to use my prep. Hey. Da -da 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 -da. Okay. So that was a pretty good. And I'm all done. And we might make it. Okay. Well, I might actually get a chance to save this room. Let's see what happens. It's a yellow five. Oh, and it's the last. So we're going to reshuffle the deck, which means a whole bunch more fives are going to come out. All right, do we have any yellow fives on the board right now? No, we don't. We only have a red five. Red five is standing by. And so, because we've now got three of these, it is time to reshuffle the event deck. Wow, okay, I'll have to put the camera down for that. Um, or actually, maybe I won't. Because you know what? I'm at 37 minutes. I think I got, you guys have definitely got the idea. I've, I've definitely shown a whole bunch of stuff. So, on Gen turn, you know, to carry this, even though normally she wouldn't suffer fatigue, she'll suffer two fatigue to move in here, but then she'll carry it off the boat. She'll drop it off. This will be the first of the four treasures we have to get. She will reduce her fatigue by half because you, you get re whenever you jump off the boat for any reason, you get um, rested, and then she'll come back in. And, well, heck, I'm not quite sure what she'll do. I mean, well, she might come over here, and you know, if we can get lucky and get this treasure before this room blows up, although the room's going to be much more likely to blow up because suddenly we now have access to a lot more fives because we've just reset the deck. But... You know what? That's a good place to stop. You guys have an idea? And plus, I can see I've only got four minutes of battery life left. So I'm going to stop right there. And you can hit the little I up in the top right corner of the screen if you want to go to Final Thoughts in five, four, three, two, one.